UTXO management is one of the most important and least talked about topics in all of Bitcoin. It's important because if you don't do it right, you're going to end up unable to ever spend your Bitcoin. And it's not talked about because it's super confusing. Luckily for you, I'm a genius and a man of the people, so I'm gonna break it down in terms that are super simple. But first, if you don't know what a UTXO is at all, check out this video that I have linked up in the cards and down in the description that's gonna explain to you why this is such a big problem. If you're already with me on why UTXO management is so important, next we're gonna jump into the framework that tells you how big a UTXO you should consider having in each of your different wallets. And because everyone watching this video is different, I'm not going to be telling you specifically how big your UTXO should be because I don't know what your situation is or what your goals are. Instead, I'll be showing everyone watching this video how you should be thinking about the problem. That way you can tailor this advice to your specific situation and save yourself. So the problem to be solved is how can I future proof my UTXOs so that I can get the smallest possible fees when I'm sending my Bitcoin while also protecting my privacy. So first we're going to think of our UTXOs as individual dollar bills. I can have a $1 bill or a $2.30 bill or a $15 bill or a $523 bill or a $10,274,821.17 bill. A UTXO is just like a blank check dollar bill and it can be of any monetary denomination that you want it to be. If your UTXO is too small, say $5 or 10,000 Satoshis as of this writing, it could eventually cost you more than $5 to spend that $5 of Bitcoin in the future, depending on what the fee market looks like. And obviously, if it costs you more than $5 to send $5, you've effectively made that Bitcoin useless. However, on the opposite side, if your UTXO is too big, like maybe say you put your entire $1 million retirement fund into Bitcoin in one UTXO. Now, if you go make a $50 payment at the bar, the bartender is going to know that you just paid with a $1 million bill and that you got back $900. $99,950 and change. So obviously we don't want our UTXOs to be too small that we can never spend them, but we don't want them to be too big so that every time we spend them, the person that we're spending them with knows our entire net worth. So how do we strike a balance between the utility of a really big UTXO and the privacy benefits of small UTXOs? The good news is, is that you're already doing this balancing act in another part of your life. If you're well-versed in personal finance, you're not saving for retirement in a checking account. Instead, you have different accounts for different time preferences. You have a checking account for daily operations. You have a savings account for short-term savings. You might have a brokerage account for medium-term savings. And you probably have tax-advantaged retirement accounts for long-term savings. And depending upon your age and upcoming future expenses, you probably have different amounts of money in these different buckets and different time thresholds for different accounts. And if that was super confusing, let me get more concrete with a specific example. I'm about to turn 30 years old, yikes. And here are my breakdowns and time thresholds for my different savings accounts. I have long-term savings at 70% of my total net worth, and I'm holding those long-term savings for 20 plus years. I have medium-term savings at 20% of my net worth, and I'll be holding that for between five and 20 years. I have short-term savings is about 9% of my net worth, and I'm holding that between one and five years. And then I have daily operations. This is money that I'm spending over the short term, maybe in a month, maybe in two months, but definitely in less than a year. And that makes up only 1% of my net worth. These allocations to these different buckets can change over time and the time definitions of these different buckets can change over time. Obviously, if you're 80 years old, your long-term savings, you're probably not gonna hold for 20 plus years. Your long-term savings might be five years or 10 years. And if you're watching this video and you started investing and you're 10 years old, your long-term savings is probably going to be a lot longer than 20 years. It might be 40 years or 50 years, depending on what your time horizon is or how long you expect to live. And these numbers could and should change over time. Maybe next year I decide that in the next one to five years, I want to buy a house so I can start moving my medium term savings, my larger UTXOs into more short term savings or smaller UTXOs. Or maybe I'm getting close to retirement and I no longer want to have a 20 plus year time horizon for my long term savings. Then maybe I decide to move half my money to the medium term savings and change the time horizons to 10 plus years and five to 10 years. This framework is as flexible as you need it to be and you should be updating it over time. Now that you've created that framework, maybe based on your own net worth and the distribution of your own current legacy financial accounts, we have to answer two questions related to our UTXOs. The first is how often am I likely to move money in each of these buckets? And the second is how big do the UTXOs need to be? So again, to give you an example, this is how I'm thinking about my buckets. My long-term UTXOs are going to make up 70% of the value of my Bitcoin, and I'm planning to hold them for more than 20 years. Because I'm unlikely to move this money anytime soon, one or two large UTXOs will help me optimize fees when I do end up needing to move the money. For my medium-term UTXOs, 
those, they're going to make up 20% of my stack, and I'm planning to hold them for 5 to 20 years. I'm also unlikely to move this money anytime soon, but when I do move this money, it will likely be to supplement a large purchase or to rebalance into short-term savings. Two to five UTXOs is enough for me to optimize fees and to give me the flexibility to rebalance into short-term savings. Next is my short-term UTXOs. This is making up 9% of my stack, and I'm planning to hold this for one to five years. This is Bitcoin that I plan to sell or spend in the next one to five years to finance a large purchase. These large purchases will be more than $1,000, so that will be the smallest amount that I hold in this category of UTXOs. And I doubt I would make more than 10 of these large purchases over a five-year period, so 10 UTXOs is the high end for this category. For my daily operations, the target is 1% of the stack, and it's Bitcoin that I plan to spend this year. And honestly, I'm unlikely to spend much, if any, on-chain Bitcoin in a year. This Bitcoin belongs in a Lightning wallet or a mobile wallet with UTXOs around the hundreds of dollars, which are amounts that I would likely spend. And at that point, even if I had a single $500 UTXO in a mobile wallet, I wouldn't really care that other people knew that I had $500 of Bitcoin sitting on a mobile wallet. And so I wouldn't really be worried about the privacy implications of that Bitcoin. And as time goes on, it seems less and less likely that I or many other people are going to be using on-chain Bitcoin for payments. Again, these are my numbers and my reasoning. You should come up with your own numbers and your own reasoning for your situation. If you're using on-chain Bitcoin payments for your daily life, you're obviously going to want more than one $500 UTXO to spend across the year. And you'll probably want more than 1% of your Bitcoin savings to be in that short-term category. So to recap, the first thing to think about here is what is an amount that you are likely to spend in each of these time ranges? And that's going to help you determine what size UTXO you need in each of these different addresses. And the second question is how often am I likely to make purchases of this size within this time bracket? And that's going to help you determine, do I need one $500 UTXO for spending, or maybe I need two or three or five or 10. And again, the further out on your time horizon you are, probably the less likely you are to need multiple UTXOs because you're not going to be transacting all that often. You might touch your retirement Bitcoin once every five years. And so in that case, maybe you're fine holding it all in one giant UTXO. The bottom line is that once you've gone through this exercise, you should have UTXO sizes and quantities for each one of these different time horizons. And now you're ready to start consolidating. To help with UTXO consolidation, go check out mempool.space so that you can see the current fee structure on the blockchain. You're going to want to wait for the fees to get as low as possible before you do your consolidation so that you can save as much money as possible. And you can check out this video up in the cards and down in the description that I've done previously on the channel that will teach you how to consolidate UTXOs. But remember, once you've done your consolidation, that that consolidation is not the end of the work that you're going to have to do to continue to upkeep your on-chain self-custody Bitcoin. You will likely spend or sell or add new Bitcoin to all of these accounts over time. Your time preference buckets are again also likely to change over time. The percent allocations, the time horizons for each of those buckets, you're going to want to come back and update them on a regular basis. I'm personally going through this exercise on a yearly basis so that I can consolidate my UTXOs and make sure that they're healthy and future-proof for future high fee markets. So if you've gone through this exercise while you've been watching this video, bookmark the video and come back here once a year or once every other year and just go through this exercise again and rebalance your accounts so that you can continue to future-proof yourself against high fee markets. Comment down below or DM me on Twitter if you have any questions. I do still respond to all the comments. And check out these videos over here to learn more about UTXOs. I love you all. See you next week.